characters. <laughs> I'm Lee from the Oshkosh Beer Blog. I'm Adam from McKnight Carlson Wines. And we have with us today Richard Cardenas. Hello. Uh, area home brewer. Um, also into the Beer Judge Certification Program training at the moment. We'll get into that later. Uh, but today we're going to be drinking Munich Dunkels. Three Munich Dunkels. We're blind tasting them. We don't know what they are. Uh, but we'll go through the three, decide which we like best, and then we'll reveal what we have. Which, uh, I don't even know what we have here. <laughs> we'll figure that out as we go. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's start off with uh, Yellow Dot Munich Dunkel. Okay. It's a nice colors, right? Nice brown beer. Dark brown beer. Yeah, it's a bit more of a copper. These are all Wisconsin brewed Munich style dunkels too. So I've never had one brewed in Wisconsin. Really? Yeah. Never. I get kind of dried fruit on the nose, kinda of like a raisin. It's a little something. bit fruity. Yeah. yeah. Which is not yeah, typically British. what you'd expect from that style. It shouldn't have a fruit notes on there. You know, you'd get more of a, a Munich vault, more of a nutty kind of sure, toffee. Sure. That, I guess I get that too, the toffee and the nutty component. Flavor is very nice, though. I get more of the I get more of the Munich malt flavor. Yeah, uh, than they do in the aroma. Definitely, there's a little bit of roastiness to it, but yeah, these that's style, nice. these shouldn't have too much roast to it. I mean, for a, more of a bready, toasty. Yeah, more to toasty. It shouldn't edge into that. Yeah, uh, maybe roast was the wrong word, but I could toasted malt kind of thing. Yeah, so, yeah, not like you know dark malt, but nice beer. Good. But that that fruity note does kind of. And that's atypical. Yeah, it really, I mean, for a clean really lager good. fermentation, yeah, really shouldn't have that kind of ester popping up. You know, I, I want to say it, it kind of goes nicely with the beer, if, if not true to style, I, I kind of like it. I, I think so, too. Yeah, if it's coming from the, the yeast, it shouldn't be there, but it could be some from the, the long boil if they're doing it. Could be, yeah. So how many how many dunkles from Wisconsin have you had then? Are you as well, Rich? Just one. This one, okay. <laughs> I've had a lot of them. Well, because you're the only one who's gonna be able to take a shot at this. I ne if I ever see a dunkel, I do not pass it up. I I I am not surprised one, one yet. I mean, this is a great drinking beer. Usually they're like right around five percent ABV. Um, Definitely have some a lot of flavor. Nice to them. flavor, but not overwhelming. It's a beer you can drink four or five of, and you know still function mm -hmm. as well as I normally function <laughs> but <laughs> it's kind of like it's sort of like uh, the, the the Bavarian version of English mild maybe mm -hmm. a little bit stronger than that but it's a drinking beer it's beer you, you know you it's, have it's got a very nice flavor now this one has more of the classic sort of dunkel aroma to me I get uh, more of that toasty bread and I get that nutty I always associate a Nuttiness with Munich malt. Okay, and I really get mm -hmm. that. From here. This one's kind of a, looks like the darkest of the bunch. Kind of like a yeah, it looks chest, like a chestnut shade or, darker. Too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a lot a more toasty beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, oh, I get kind of almost like a, a light coffee, like medium roast coffee mm -hmm. in the nose. Oh, that's delicious. That Munich malt really comes up. And I'm getting some really deep <clears throat> toasted bread. And yeah. yeah, but yeah. It, I, it doesn't really verge into the roast, you know. No, it's, no, it's, very, it's pretty clean. And it shouldn't it shouldn't get that astringent? You know, all. and I for my palate, I don't think this is quite as drinkable as the first one, but you it's know. it's a little heavier in body. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. And this may, maybe a, slight, a little bit higher alcohol. Yeah, there's a little slight drying on the mm -hmm. back. I love that one. Mm. I do too, but two kind of totally different styles. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, the malt flavor in there is terrific. Yeah. The hops are just so subdued. It's there. I mean, it's enough bitterness to balance it, but it's very I'm subdued. Getting some of that hop, almost a fruity hop note on the back end. Oh, are you? Yeah. So what is it, Lee? Oh, I could never pick that out of here. I mean, traditionally, it would probably be Hallertau. Okay. You know, they wouldn't, uh, in the Bavarian beers, they wouldn't use something like Sots. Sure, um, sure. Tatmanger, maybe, but more than likely Hallertau. Okay. What beer is it? What beer is this? Yeah. I don't know. Actually, I do have uh, an idea. Yeah, I think I do. Well, let's hear it. I hadn't really thought of it until you. I mean, I'm not sure what the three styles are. I think it's. Um, 
Lakefront, East Side Dark. Okay. I think. If mm. I had to guess. Hmm. That'd be very interesting. It's different than I remembered it, but... I love that beer. Yeah, <laughs> I do too. I think it's really nice. Okay, then on to pink. Pink. This is a Definitely little lighter, lighter huh? Yeah. yeah. I think I guess I, it's about the same color as the first go around. Oh, we'll definitely get some bread notes on the aroma. Oh yeah, yeah. And there's a little bit of uh, sulfur in the aroma, like from that lager fermentation. Mm -hmm. Sure. I always kind of like that. Yes. Small amounts, it's not a bad thing. Yeah. This is fairly carbonated. Yeah. It's got kind of <clears throat> some spritzy carbonation in my, my it, mind. It tastes a little stale to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it de definitely doesn't have the, the depth of flavor that the first two had. This doesn't taste as stale as the beer we had last week. <laughs> <laughs> we had That's these 40 year old beers last week. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yeah, anything will taste better than those, comparatively. Yeah, I'm getting a little... I, I wonder how old that beer is. Yeah, I mean, it's not terrible, but no. it's, it doesn't have the, the brightness, I think, yeah. that, that no, fresh, fresh beer has. Yeah, it's not finishing as malty clean. It's got a lingering hop bitterness to it, but yeah. it does shouldn't have be a, that high on the yeah. side. This beer really doesn't have like the concentrated flavors that the first two has, just kind of, you know middle of the road and, and that could be from its age or it could be from yeah. the, the style but it doesn't it doesn't really jump out like the first two did no definitely not yeah, it's kind of steel steal almost like a lingering it's like cardboard piece hmm. I get that too so you think it's flawed or do you I wonder how long it's been sitting around you know I mean these beers should hold up very yeah. well um, and they're all Wisconsin beers, but you never know. Yeah, you know what's going. It on. It is huh? quite carbonated. Should so, yeah. Style. Richard, you first. What's your uh, favorite of the three? And then we'll reveal our. our I toss up between these two. One yeah, I agree. Two. I think I think the second example to me would scream the, the truest of style, but I, I do like the first example as well. And had for drinkability. Great drinkability. Yeah. I mean, I can see myself having a pint or two of that. It, you know, same for the second one, but I did, there's something about the first one that the, the little bit lighter style that I yeah. liked. And I think the, the the first one's a little bit more carbonated than the second one also, yeah. which yeah. makes it kind of a little bit cleaner on the yep. palate. But I would go for green. Yeah. That's that's my... You would. That's my... Uh, I love that yeah, kind of nutty... Here flavor you get it's, from it's the malt. very nice. I think it's very nice. They're, they're, they're both a good. Bit, the green is definitely better than the yellow. It's got me. Yeah, the yellow kind or not the, the yellow, yellow the, pink. the pink. The pink is the pink kind of fell apart there. I'm yeah. not sure what. Okay, so should we do the big reveal here? The unveiling. Yeah. All right, so off camera, what's yellow? Oh, yellow is Capital Dark. Okay. Their Darton Brow. Capital Brewing Company. That's a good beer. Yeah. What's green? <laughs> Nailed it. East Side Dark, Dark from Lakefront. I got that one. It. All right. So what's uh and that's Berghoff. uh Berghoff. Uh, is that Sir huh. Dunkel? Sir Dunkel Dark. Okay. Yes. Now Berghoff, uh that's actually being brewed in point. You know, so that was the one I thought was a little bit off. Off. And it's like it's right here. It's yeah. hundred miles up the road. It's yeah. not hundred miles even, you know. Not an either. hour up yeah. the road, whatever, fifty miles up the road. Well Berghoff hasn't had fantastic reputation for I've had yeah, they've always some, been fairly sweet yeah well like I think it's two years ago now they changed they took the, they were being brewed at Huber or at the Minhas yeah, and they pulled all that out and uh, took the beers to point and they reformulated their recipes uh, and I had some pretty good luck with their yeah. beer until well, I, I know they were making like a they were making a stock ale weren't they or yeah they were doing that, a I stock thought that was unique when I saw that I never had a chance to try it but so one thing I, I th think we should get into is Richard you're taking a uh, courses through the beer judge certification program correct so uh why exactly are you doing that my initial reason is to be a better brewer um helps me evaluate the beers that i'm going to make and if i have any flaws or i don't quite reach what i want it to be how can i correct that and also it helps me just evaluate other beers so, so how, how many now. of these core how many of these classes have you taken at this point uh right now i've taken one it just started up it runs from well, September to April, 
and there's about a dozen classes. Um, each one covers a different range. We start off doing analysis and sensory evaluation of a beer and break down the different styles, fill out the judging sheet, wow. go through the whole step process. And we do that throughout the, we fill out two, three sheets, and but we do definitely sample a lot more of the beers. So one thing I've always been curious about that people go through this program, does it change the way you uh, approach beer now? Yes. Well, it has uh, to. Yeah. Does it make it less enjoyable or more no, actually, enjoyable? <laughs> um, for the most part, it makes it more enjoyable. Does it? Uh, there are some that will definitely stand out where you might have thought you really enjoyed for a long time, but now after you start analyzing it, you realize that there may be a flaw, and you may still like it just because it might be your one of your regulars, yeah. but you may not go for it as easily as before. Because <laughs> sometimes, you know, you overanalyze a pleasure, it kind of can, brings it, turns sure. it into work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but you'll see more and more, you know, those who go to the class, they'll be at the bars, and be sniffing every one of their beers. They'll be looking at it through the light. And you become one of those. You people. become one of those people. <laughs> Sending beer back. Yeah, <laughs> I will drink it. So, is there anything about that you've learned so far that kind of uh, surprised you, or that upended your uh, your approach to beer? Or uh, there were a few styles. And I took the course last year, and there were a few beers as we taste throughout the course that surprised me, being a lot better flavor than I actually thought them. And now, we, when we talk about the different styles we start getting into the depth of what that style is. Mm -hmm. uh, it may have been a beer that I didn't care for before, or a style, and you start appreciating it more. Yeah, because yeah. Now the background on it. Background, you know what it's supposed to be, exactly. exactly. Now, how, how in-depth do they go with the styles? I mean, do you, are you trying, like, grotzers and things like, you know, well, we did, un unusual beer styles in addition yes. to the, the big, yeah. big boys? Uh, okay. This year, with the, with the 2015 BJCP guidelines, they're bringing back historical beers. And That's, one, seems fitting. one of them is the Kentucky Common. Okay. And last, uh, the first class, we had two homebrew examples of the Kentucky Common. Really? And a nice little history pamphlet they handed out. Just so wow. we could, you know, nobody really truly knows what it tastes like. They can all go by the notes and by the recipes they're finding. And that's pretty incredible. soon that might become a, you know, Well, a that's, the, that's what's so great about that, too, is like, that's a beer style that's been, I mean, you know, in, in Louisville around that area, that was a huge beer style before Prohibition, and then it just died. It got mm -hmm. killed. By them bringing that back, you'll see brewers start making it again. I, I think there are. There's at least one commercial example out there. Carol. There's a, a brewery in Goshen, Indiana, um, and one of the brewers there hails actually from Oshkosh. Oh, really? Yeah, and they're they're brewing a Kentucky Common now. Yeah, yeah. Well, home brewers are keeping a lot of these old styles alive, bringing it back. Bringing yeah, it to the I mean, we've, we've done a Berliner Weiss beer on the show before, and we've yeah. um, certainly had Gozas and things that, you know, five years ago were basically extinct, or six years ago. Mm -hmm. So that's really unique and popular, so. Well, great, guys. This was fun. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I love tasting beers blind. It, to me, I know. Well, it takes all, just... all the preconceptions of it. And it, it took it. a beer that I liked, and I love this beer. Yeah. <laughs> it really opens your eyes to stuff, you know. Absolutely. Okay. Cheers, gentlemen. Prost. Thanks, Thanks Rich. Thanks, Rich. Thank you.